Hello, everybody, and welcome to Capsule Cast. This is not going to be like our normal ones. We are starting our new uh, team interview section. So I am your host, Dorgard, with my co-host, Donut. Hello. And for our first week, as you might have been able to tell by the title, we have Derp. So welcome the coach of Derp, Fiora. What's up? <laughs> We have had Fiora on before, of course, if you watched during the main season, but this is a little more specific. We won't be necessarily looking at matches, but at what his team has to do. So with that, let's get on to looking at the uh, beautiful, beautiful banner for the 2020 season of what Derp is. Fiora, do you want to give a few sentences on what Derp represents? Like, why are they Team Derp? Yeah. Team Derp represents the characters in Dragon Ball Z that were built up to be strong, but unfortunately just didn't live up to hype. Either they were defeated very easily, or a newly powered up main character just beat them down really badly, or they just never really got a chance to show off anything cool. In terms of my team, in terms of like supporters, we're fairly competitive, you know, we were definitely going in this to win. We may be Team Dirk, the quote-unquote joke team of the league, but we're definitely giving it our all. And currently in testing, we're trying quite a few things with some pretty good success overall. Some duds, of course, but that's to be expected. Yeah, I think Team Derp's one of those really fun teams that's been around and in seasons they've done good or bad have always had a lot of support from everybody in the league so it's always been a very enjoyable team to watch do you have any uh comments on uh how you view team derp donut as a fellow coach um yeah i always thought they were a pretty um fun team overall not very for fun but a, a fun team and theme um i always thought they're like the underdog story you kind of rooted for and um i think a lot of other teams probably share that sentiment. Um, and it's cool. I, I remember the, back in season eight, I believe, um, they had this huge run in, into the into the playoffs, and I think everyone was like, it was like the Cinderella story. That was really cool. And um, obviously, you can't predict the champ. Champ was fantastic. Always his best cat today. My assigned team. But um, I don't know. It was a really fun team overall. And um, you always you always kind of find yourself pulling pulling for them in the matches. So yeah, when we get to uh, the history section you'll see they are uh even though the 2020 season maybe wasn't their uh best year they've certainly always been a competitive lot a team you can never take lightly even on an off season uh they have very strong members obviously just looking the champ kibito kai salsa devil man jero just from this last season and we'll go over what changes they're looking at as well is there any uh kind of final remarks you guys want to go over on the theme before we get going into their history and accomplishments uh, no, nothing in particular. No, no. Alrighty then. So, let's get on to our first kind of factual information. Obviously, a lot going on here. Uh, most people know that their best members are the Champ and Salza. Uh, the Champ being Hercule, or Mr. Satan, being an extremely strong character in his own right. And Salza just always being a very consistent wall. Um, their 2020 team, as seen on the little visual we had before was Herc, Salza, Supreme Kai, Devilman, and Jero. And uh, they are actually looking to be one of the teams with some of the most changes. A lot of teams really looking to evolve. So they have uh, more than a few characters, but to Dory and Kui, just some quick shout outs of ones they are very much interested in with some swapping. But let's go through a little bit of their playoff history. They are, again are a team that has always seemed to, to find their way in there, especially early on. Uh, season two, they got all the way to round two of playoffs. Um, got out in round one of the season four playoffs and as said before in season eight they picked up nuova who ended up going on a mad run dealing some insane damage basically taking a whole team on his own to making it all the way to the season eight finals uh, season nine they managed to make it to round two again in season 10 the round one so season 10 is the season that happened right before our season 2020 that has happened so to put that we are kind of season 11 but we're calling it 2020 as we are under new management so an impressive history certainly one that has had their ebbs and flows um, but ne again never a team that you can take out even in the uh, just the previous year they they really showed up so it doesn't take um, much 
imagination to see, the, uh, especially when you have someone like the champ to, to go far sometimes. So uh, looking, obviously, to repeat some successes. Uh, but overall, like, you can ask for more to, to be a team that's made it to playoffs more than a few times and sometimes back to back uh, for three seasons in a row on eight, nine and ten. So I'm guessing looking to tie or beat that record here. Yeah, we're definitely we're definitely planning on making it pretty far into the playoffs next season, especially with all the changes that we're making. Yeah, I guess uh, we forgot to ask on the previous slide is uh, how long have you been with the team? I know you took over as coach about midway into the season in 2020 due to the other coach having some other issues going on uh, that we don't need to get into. But how long have you, I guess, been a supporter of Team Dirt? Well, I have been a supporter of the league since late season six. I only recently became an active supporter and an active supporter of Team Dirt. It was, I believe I got into the revamped league around the week two of the preseason. And I just instantly came there, got to go represent the team. Pretty much the, the team that, the team from the original 16 teams left that I liked the most. And uh, about... Sometime between weeks five and six, I think actually the day after the we we recorded the week five capsule cast, our coach contacted me about how he wanted to step down from being the coach and figured that I could replace him because of how active I was with the team, coming up with new builds and new ideas, you know, just some fresh blood as the head of the team, basically. Yeah, Donut, you were in a similar situation of uh, becoming very active and then uh, kind of stepping into coach role not too long ago. So certainly yeah, got some I, similar ground there. Yeah, I, I can definitely um, um, share that that feeling of just being thrown into the fire, essentially. Um, so what what you said as soon as um, you joined you, um, your old team that you liked um, disbanded or was let go, essentially. Um, and so what drew you to Dub essentially? Was there a certain character? Was it a theme? Was there a certain supporter? It was a mix of the characters and the theme itself because, you know, I really love underdog stories. And, and who thematically is a bigger underdog than Team Derp? You know, the entire theme of the team is that these are the characters that did basically nothing in the show or they did nothing cool. And to just be in that sort of position where, you know, you can coach these characters who never got their time to shine in the show and give them justice in the league. I really love that. And of course, the champ is great. He is one of my favorite characters in Dragon Ball. And just <laughs> Supreme Kai for how hilarious he can be at times like way back in season two where he after image strike through an ultimate multiple times even though he didn't need to mm -hmm. <laughs> probably one of his one of his most if not his most infamous moment in the league there's just a lot about team dirt that i love yeah, i think funny enough even if you guys like had an undefeated season you'd still be seen as the underdog in every match just because that's so rooted in your core uh, almost could be the second name for the team but Derp's just too classic to drop at this point. Yeah. Well, uh, shall we get moving on to the individual characters going from uh, top to bottom in terms of what we're grabbing this next season? Yeah, let's, let's go. All righty then. Of course, we got to start with the champ, Hercule. Uh, extremely oh. powerful character, uh, heavily modded as well. If you don't know, there's been lots of mods to this league to make it more accessible for different characters to be brought in. The champ was added the ability to knock back people with punches and given some damage onto his supers, as well as making his rush B2 a... Uh, it, it always does damage instead of a 50-50. So with those switches, he became an immense, immense, big, big B2 damage boy. Uh, he loves to drop his present bombs. Even though he has a tracking rush ult, it does some pretty big damage as we've seen. Borrowing a member from Bujins, we have signed a contract that's just under how 
management runs here. Uh, obviously having his false courage, if you go back and watch, there were some amazing moments this season where he just walked through supers just because he had to grab you or something, and he did not care. Uh, if you don't know, false courage gives power body, which ignores knockback, which is quite hilarious. Uh, and of course, present bomb being one of the most <laughs> unique blasts twos in the game having a very strange uh it's like a grab super but instead of grabbing it it kind of forces them into an animation so it's one of the only interrupt like kind of supers we have in this game and it just it does quite a lot of damage with his super build to deal about 10k and just i mean there's nothing like just stopping something like broly from punching your face in by giving him a present that ends up being a bomb though he unfortunately does have some cons as to keep him balanced we obviously have his grab throws them straight up, which makes it very difficult to uh, kind of combo into when uh, both, none of his stuff goes straight up. <laughs> and then obviously he is going. sometimes just too good to be true, and um, he believes in his hype a little too much, which gets him into trouble. So <laughs> what would you add to this, Donut, before we get on to Fiora's views of his uh, sure. magnificent man? Um, I'll say um, the mods were greatly appreciated by Team Depth. I think the community as a whole um, thought it was very warranted to um, have it because he was a big detriment. So to see those mods and make him such a, um, a huge threat is very nice to see. Um, but yeah, Present Bomb, I think there's only very few ways, if not only one way, which would be after image to dodge it or just to not walk up to him at all. But the AI likes to walk up to him. So there it is. Um, the False Curse obviously has a lot of um, funny interactions, I think, with the the combination of dynamic um, mess him up punch, he can just really um, uh, somersault into a B2 and just not care. It's really just funny as hell. Um, but you know, that's kind of what it is. And um, obviously, the false codes is a detriment in the same sense because he'll just stand there and do nothing in front of him and think he's okay and just take like a thousand or uh, five thousand points of damage for no reason. Um, so it's a little high and low at the same time with that, but. I think the highs significantly outweigh the, the cons right now for him. And uh, that's what makes him what's such a strong character, easily top 10 in the lead. Yeah, Fior, how does it feel to have a pretty much consistent all-star in the champ? Certainly a nice little beacon to uh, help keep the team together, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty great to have the champ on the team after all the buffs that he got through mods, because like you've said previously, before mods, he was really more of a liability. Like, there were many matches in previous seasons where he would use dynamic mess up punch and only do one point of damage every time, which would really suck because if it did full damage every time, like it does currently, he would have done much better and could have gotten derp some wins that they honestly did deserve. Currently, with. In testing, I'm really loving Super Plus 2 on the champ because his natural charge rate is just that good where even with the key minus, his charge rate is still pretty solid even without, say, fighting spirit to boost him when he's low on health. And of course, those 10k B2s are just so good and so attractive. I've tried, like, this... I've tried other key and super protars on him in testing like key minus or key key minus one key plus two key plus one but it just it just doesn't have the same impact as say a 10k present bomb especially with how easy his b2s are to hit if he's going to hit like say three or four b2s a match then it's better for them to do 10k than like six or seven you know <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can't really take much away from the champ since he, uh, you can almost say he was modded to be from Turkiel to become the champ. And uh, since then, he is going to be your <laughs> rising star, as you said, the Super Plus 2. If you haven't checked it out in testing they've had and the 4v4 tests that come out, uh, he's still still quite bopping. So uh, certainly a keystone of the team. Will be interesting to see what he does in the season as uh, he was a top 10 member for even I think a top five member for most of the league this year, despite the results of the team. So he's looking to try not to carry mm -hmm. everything on his big back, but man, is it a, is it a big back? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the rest of the team shows up to lighten his workload. <laughs> yeah. With that, should we get on to the second member might 
possibly be known as the co-captain of the team. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, I was joking. I got you Supreme Kai. You know, I had to try oh, yeah. so hard not to hide a little Supreme jacket in here with all that meme going around. <laughs> uh, but no, really, this man has been <laughs> such a solid member of your guys' squad. Uh, obviously, Salsa being the main second in command, but Supreme Kai has to get some love and, uh, you know, some good pros. He is a very good melee. Uh, he can really do just about anything. He's a good all-rounder in that aspect. Uh, he has a he's one of the few characters that has a single health transformation so he can have base form go into kibito which allows him to gain some health and key back um, and his kit is basically good for just about every situation having some good b2s uh, a pretty good ult and of course just decent melee all around uh, the cons is if he does take his uh, base form to transform and gain health mid fight he cannot have eternal life which every team only gets one and that means he would have to uh, basically not have it, but uh, as Fuhrer would gladly tell you, it, it was never a plan to go on him anyways. Um, and I would say kind of the key con to him is he's kind of the jack of all trades, master of none. Certainly melee is where he's excelled the most at, but due to him being pretty much good at everything, it seems like he always seems to lack in something during every match due to being so good at it all. So certainly a very, very strong character on their team has helped kind of be a nice keystone in the middle of the pack so i think just about every team has their supreme kai style character isn't that right mm -hmm. donut yeah i think a lot of teams have that that middle of the pack character that just kind of doesn't do great but doesn't do horrible um it just kind of i want to say not there but it's very solid very 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 stable as a dependable character. the reliable yeah, yeah all reliable and um, I think Supreme Kai is definitely that character. Um, they say he's a very all-around um, character, but um, he had a, a somewhat of a lower showing um, this past um, season, but historically he's been very solid. So um, um, I know in testing, you guys are actually um, flirting with the idea of studying base form, and I actually like the idea quite a, a, quite a bit. I feel um, from what I've seen in testing, it's shown a lot of good, um, good traits and good... Um, good uh, viability so i was wondering what your what your um idea was going into that why you chose to explore that form did you have um initial thoughts after seeing the past season on the um the um um Kibito form or did you always intend to just go to supreme kai over the um the course of the off season at first i was just planning on testing Kibito because inter like stat wise, Kabito is stronger than his base form. Like mm -hmm. his melee is a little stronger. His B2 is hot, but in this league, every little bit of damage helps. However, I asked the other members of my team, like, hey, do you think we should try and test out his base form? And they pretty much said, like, yeah, let's go for that, see how it works. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're actually in the favor of starting him in his base form because like Dorgar has mentioned by starting him in his base form he can transform which gives him an extra 5000 hp and again every little bit helps yep. and recently especially ever since starting in his base form in our 4v4 tests he's been doing a lot better there hasn't been a single time where he's done below 40k damage huh. compared to Kabito or not half the time, but a decent chunk of the time, he hits below that, like, 35 mark. Yeah. And currently, so something I noticed is that Supreme Kai, especially on Cell AI, likes to throw out a decent amount of B2s. Hmm. Which, well, it's not bad, it's just that when he, what he was previously built for was just min-max for melee. Serious, attack plus one, quick fast attacks. Den days, light body, exquisite skill, pretty much just go for an all out melee guy. However, I'm thinking, what if I actually try to build him as an all rounder? Because that's sort of what his kit is good for, you know? Super plus one, serious, quick fast attack, launch, and den days. See how that works. If it does well in testing, pretty good. If not, at least he has a melee build that we can put him back on. Sure, yeah. Of course, you obviously lose the eternal life on that, but. Is that the end we of the never world, intended. Yeah. 
we never intended to give him eternal life. Yeah, so that's that solves this thing. Yeah, at least so for this also, season. Yeah, so I don't think that it's too much of a detriment right, at all. It's more of an upside of anything. So. Yeah, being mm -hmm. able to gain health back is a is a very difficult thing. Most teams only have the two dendes in eternal life. So being able to have another form that literally doesn't retract or put any restrictions on your squad is always a benefit. Um, mm. Plus, he gains key back, yeah, which we're... is quite yeah, big. Definitely, You'd be yeah. surprised. That's really huge. That's another B2, right? That's 7,000 7, mm -hmm. damage, 8,000, whatever, right? Yeah, we're, Adds up. we're not Team Cold. We don't have four transformations that could potentially <laughs> ban us from Eternal Life. Oof. <laughs> or uh, Cell, who just on any other form bans yeah. the team due to having so much health steal. So, yes. mm -hmm. yeah, there's a, there's more than a few ways to get it banned or allowing healing uh, Blast 1s or B1s as they're known. So lots of things. Um, I don't even recall the B1s off Supreme Kai because, uh, to be honest, they're not as uh, big on his kit as they are for some other characters just because of how well the rest of his kit seems to, to mesh. So... Yeah, he certainly yeah. has he high has a, hopes. He has a stun B1 and after image strike in his base form, which is an, the after image strike especially is another reason why we're we're pretty much planning on starting him in his base form next season. Yes, yeah, it's just such a good extremely B1. good, probably one of the best B1s. Mm -hmm. Such a especially good since by net. transforming he gets rid of the charge penalty. Yeah, so there's ways for him to to just cheat it. So lots of fun there, and again, like as Sphira said, they have lots of melee builds they know can work, but he actually has the kit to do pretty much anything, and uh, with uh, some characters later on in this list, he might not be the only one who has to go melee, so he might be able to branch out in some variety. So it will be yeah. interesting to see. Um, if you watch the last few weeks of the season especially, you'll see that you know, when he was in Kabito Kai, he was popping off and taking out teams. Like, he really was fighting yeah. off real hard. So, definitely a very strong character and a great one to have on the squad. Uh, certainly one you'll probably never, ever see dropped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I highly doubt we'd ever drop Supreme Kai, unless he just dropped the ball really hard for multiple seasons. Yeah, and that would be a lot of time of testing, too. So. Yeah. Shall we get... I have a lot more patience for him than a certain robot. <laughs> yeah, certainly Jero uh, was uh, not on many people's oof. high list. Now yeah. shall we get moving on to the third guaranteed member of the 2021 season? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. It's the man, the myth, the legend himself, Salza, the French entrepreneur here to fight it out. Um, while he has a fun, unique lightsaber move, we never get to see his ult too often due to it being straight line rush. But this has kind of been... You want to talk about Supreme Kai being Mr. Consistent. This guy, for surprisingly uh, a long, 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 long time, has been their eternal life user, and uh, he deserves it. Like, he really does put in some great work with it. Always doing well with defense. Obviously, uh, some pros is he has some really good spam with uh, just kind of being an all-around tanky kind of member, hard to deal with. Uh, he's a persistent threat. He stays very consistent each season, pretty much always does what he needs to do. Uh, and he's having defense eternal life makes it to where it just takes forever to take him out. And having a two bar B2 allows him to actually spam out a pretty decent amount of time. Uh, unfortunately, it's a very close range B2, but it, I mean, any two bar B2 that does more than 5k is just great to have because characters love to jump back, fire him. So some cons though is because he tends to be, pretty much always has been their eternal life user, he has very limited Patara spots to build, especially with this last season being defense plus two. That means they have one other Patara they can slot in there. Uh, so kinds of, <laughs> you get seven, eternal life is four, defense plus two is two. That's six, yeah, not much there. So we've seen some uh, experimentations with defense plus two attack minus one, which gives an extra point for some extra stuff. So it will be interesting to see how he develops this uh, off season as a, uh, it's, while turn of life seems to be a mainstay the other patars might be a little more flexible so and obviously being someone who is super focused on the tank they can sometimes lack the firepower to deal with a uh, bigger threat as a uh, some character that it maybe is harder into damage can maybe break through the wall that is you know the defense plus two eternal life build due to it only having a few patars to pack it up but overall like just super super solid character i i wouldn't call him mr consistent i would say this is uh 
you got this and Herc are both holding up the chair of, of Derp, trying to push him through to a victory. Uh, these are the, the two carries you would have. So overall, great character, always fun to see. I believe he also has False Courage, which helps out even more in his defense. He doesn't. He doesn't? He, does he does have Finish Sign, though. Yeah, that's what it was. Finish, it was finish Sign, which allows good. him to... It's why it's yeah, not as big nice. a deal to not have the damage on him, because if he can stack some Finish Signs, he will deal some big damage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, certainly uh, one of the... A character that's maybe been memed about for being bad, which is funny because of how good he is. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird, because um, I've done a lot of testing against Souls of this offseason for Androids, and um, the the character is very good, right? He spams those scatter finger beams like no other, right? And um, and his ability to dodge on, on whatever AI he's using, I think it's Piccolo AI is currently what it is. Um, and his ability to do... Yeah, that's um, what he's been on all season. Yeah, and the ability to dodge and just outmaneuver um, my characters is, is very frustrating, right? Um, but it's just it shows that he's in a good spot, right? He's definitely the top um, top two members of um, alongside the champ with um, this team. And um, no, definitely a thing. Like, if you want a character something like, you no, know, Mister Take His Man, it's Salsa. Right? He'll do, he'll do his 40k and then minimum, right? And he'll. That's all. That's all. That's all he needs to do, really. In in all honesty, right? And then the champ can help clean up. Um, it, it's it's weird because like I know in in the old league, um, he was definitely memed on and definitely looked down upon. But he's a very solid kid as a character. Um, his ult is obviously isn't optimal, but everything else about him is very strong, right? And just to put him out there and do that, um, that tank and say, hey, we're gonna put you on tank and healing, buy time for you, allow you to do your thing with the spam, and stacking the finish line, very just solid game plan overall, so we like what you're doing with him. Yeah, Salsa, ironically, despite having Eternal Life, which limits his Portara's, He's actually pretty flexible in what I want, could want him to do. You know, he's got pretty solid melee. His B2s are pretty solid. You know, Skyrim Finger being one of the best two-bar B2s because it goes in a bit of an arc. So yep. it can actually hit stuff, unlike certain other finger beams. Cough, <laughs> cough. Death beam. Cough, cough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> cough, cough. Bionic Punisher. Cough, cough. Mm -hmm. You know, his melee is solid. His B2s are solid. His charge rate's actually pretty decent when you look at it so currently you know in season you know in season 2020 he was pretty much just a pure tank build pure defense eternal life just you know all out tank and that definitely worked pretty well for him he averaged over 40k when you take out the four weeks of testing with a terrible ai that i did <laughs> and recently I've noticed that on certain AIs, he really loves to spam a lot more. So I'm thinking, what if I turn, you know, just defense plus two to defense plus two attack minus one and give him that fighting spirit to boost his charge rate, try to make him more of a tanky spammer. And I've had some pretty solid success overall with that. Of course, sometimes he just throws out a finger beam when halfway across the map, but that's to be expected for a spammer. You know, that's going to happen inevitably. So, Salsa has just been... Uh, funny enough, actually, Salsa has been probably my best character in testing. Like, he's just done consistently the best when testing AIs for him and in 4v4s, although I wouldn't be surprised at all if the champ manages to outshine him in the later half of this off t of this off season. Yeah, certainly being a character based more around defense, uh, you know, means he's super survivable, so be able to stick in there to get his damage, but the high burst of the champ and being able to hit some incredibly large numbers always makes him kind of the go-to character to look at when you're looking at a team. But Salza is the rock that will always be there, the foundation to a degree. You know, he's what holds up the glass cannon that is Herc. Some, it's got to sit on something, and it, sitting yep. on Sauls is a great way to go. And uh, you'll be seeing them, those two kind of team up all the time uh, throughout the season to, to really lead Derp to great victories. So I expect a lot out of him, yeah. and he uh, he's one who usually does give out that 
expectations to for good reason. Yeah, Salza definitely works best in the grind game when he's up against, say, other defense builds or just characters that don't do big burst damage. Yeah. His worst matchup, though, is definitely those characters that spam a lot. Like, in Week 9 against Resurrected Warriors, he went up against End Vegeta, who just spammed him to death. That is yeah. Salza's one weakness, yeah, I would that, say. Yeah, that'll always be the issue for any tank characters. Uh, B2 damage, even when it's being you know neutralized a bit by defense will always be big unfortunately so it'll always be a hard time for him and it's it's a great way to chunk him down but that is just you know everything's a rock paper scissors you kind of have spam melee and and tank and they kind of all beat each other melee beats spam spam beats tank uh, and tank to a degree beats melee because it can just outlast him so it just depends Some all of those can obviously it. flip around sometimes tank beats spam just because uh, you have to you have to hit enough b2s to break them down uh, you know sometimes spam beats melee because they're able to spam them off of you but you know general rule of thumb is is it kind of goes at least those are the three main build paths people go down it's just what yeah. alterations from there an infinite tree of patara building um, so very fun but Salza pretty solidly in the tank lineup. When you think of a tank, Salza certainly up there next to Tien as just, yeah, he's just going to sit there for like an hour. Menacingly. <laughs> I keep hitting him, but he won't die. Did you wish for immortality on the Dragon Balls? Yeah, I just had to include the battle damage picture of him because I mean, that's just that's just him. He's just like, you hit me with the Kamehameha? I ain't done yet. <laughs> Well, with that, do you have any yeah, more funny. comments you guys want to speak on our boy Salsa here? I, am I think good. I've said everything on him. Yeah, certainly a mainstay to keep your eye out. So those are the three 100% characters for the next season. You will see them, guaranteed. Uh, moving on to the new blood, we have Kui. Uh, certainly a character that's like a 95% chance of making it, unless something really blows him out of the water. Um, so... First time, I think, in a long, long, long time we've seen Kui on a team. And this time, he's not going to be a free agent. He's actually uh, looking to be picked up to be a pro roster for Derp. Uh, as you can see by his sweaty picture, he was very surprised to hear the news and then manned up. And now he's ready to go. So, some pros is uh, based on Fiora's own words. He's going to be maximum melee. Very fast melee. Does some pretty decent damage. They can throw a lot on him. Um, he has some pretty decent Rust Blasts. I wouldn't say they're outstanding by any levels, but they've shown to be something worth kind of investing in from time to time. Uh, he only has one B1, his other one being a healing one, so it was disabled. So he has False Courage for one. Uh, so he's able to constantly have Power Body up, always being able to prevent knockback, stay, being able to stay in there and really punch it out. Um, I would say the biggest con, though, for our man here is he's basically untested and underused in the full league setting. He has certainly found his way onto teams in preseasons before, but when it gets to the kind of cutting floor time, he hasn't always made the cut. So we, seeing him for a full season will be new, and I think a lot of people are going to be very excited to see him. Obviously, Fiora has been ex extremely, extremely optimistic on his performances, and he's really put in a lot of work so far in the testing saga, so it will be interesting to see how he evolves. Um, yeah, Kui is uh, a very interesting character today. Um, I say very untested, very unknown. Um, so we have no idea how well he'll do in the actual main lead um, season, but when I heard that um, Dub was looking to pick him up, I was very excited for this pickup because I thought he had a very, very decent ceiling. Not a, not a top 15 character, but I thought maybe into the top 40 characters, right? Around that area, I think he could get to. And, um, I think the idea of maximum melee is interesting. Um, but doing the, going from the testing that I've seen so far against um, mid Vegeta way back, as well as a few 44s, um, it's actually doing pretty well, and I like the idea of comboing that false code B1 with his ult. Um, it works very well together, so that's a very, um, very nice you know, plug and play type strategy you can do with it. Um, and I think it'll be a very good character for him to have, just uh, a solid character is not really going to hinder them as well as much, and um, is a ensuring to get that false code, which is one of the better B1s in the game. So 
the I really like the pickup depth one. Yeah, what are some of your hopes right. uh, and aspirations here for your boy Kui? And I guess yeah, the yeah. thought process behind picking him up. Yeah, yeah. Why would you pick him up over, let's say, a pool who is very similar in in design as with Kui? So what made you um consider Kui as a sure thing in comparison? So when I first started testing, once I was able to, I did a pool, just tested every AI except for Kume AI because my team's <laughs> grabs suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, a pool, you know, people were really hyping him up because, you know, he had some pretty good performances. I was just thinking, okay, he could be a pretty decent pickup. And then after doing Frieza Soldier, which I regret doing, I should have spent those five testing opportunities for other things. <laughs> then I started to test Kui. And immediately, there was one thing about Kui that caught my attention and just made me really want him for the team, his melee speed. Oh. Before testing, I had no expectations for Kui. I was just thinking, okay, he's probably going to be similar to a pool in terms of kit. I don't know what's going to come out of it. Let's just see if he does better or worse than a pool. And with how fast his melee speed is, like when you compare it, like he's fighting mid Vegeta, you know, you know, a Vegeta who tends to have some of the fastest melee in the league. And Kui's melee is about as fast as his. Not as strong, but that speed, though. So, from then on, I was just thinking, I gotta have this guy. His melee is so fast, easily the fastest on my master list. Mm -hmm. It could easily balance out everybody, everybody else on the team having mid to slow melee. And of course, the fact that he has false courage as his only B1 really helps, considering how he's intended to be melee. Because, you know, he could just get up in your face and keep hitting you. But if you try to hit him, he won't stun. He'll just keep going. Yeah. Granted, his B2s aren't the best. Like, he has that sort of energy volley B2, which costs three bars and barely does above 5k. Yeah. But... Yep. And of course, he has a rush ult, which those are always fairly difficult to work with, although his does track. Yes. And with the false cut, it should help some. Mm hmm I tried for a while. I tried to give him Master Blast because he, like, his full key, you know, when he does a bunch of key blasts in the enemy's face, mm -hmm. it's the strongest on my team by a decent margin. But it just, I don't think it was worth it because he didn't do key blasts as much. But ah. who knows, maybe in future testing, I might slap it back on him. You never know. And by giving him Combo Master recently, he's been able to hit up to 9,000 damage melee combos, which is just very impressive. So Kui's looking to be a very good pickup for Derp. Yeah, certainly a character with high potential. Obviously, I think he only has a max of four blast stocks, but having only needing to get one to do false courage means you have to do you basically don't have to put any patars towards his uh, blast stocks. They just they come naturally at a good enough level that you're just fine. So, yeah. and of course, mm -hmm. uh, every team gets attack plus one and attack plus two defense minus one, both being one cost pataras that boost all melee damage. So he can easily take whichever one Kibito doesn't take. And seeing as Kibito can be a great all-rounder, he can take attack plus one while Kui takes attack plus two, and they can both just kind of beat on people. So mm -hmm. he's he fits in. He doesn't take anybody else's position. He really adds to the team as just a true hard melee character that they they kind of been wanting, as well as uh, surprisingly hitting his ult a fair bit for having a rush yeah. ult uh, and yeah. not being built to ever ult. So... You know, he, he certainly <laughs> does a, a lot of stuff for the squad. I, it's going to be very uh, interesting to see, you know, how he performs in the season. Obviously, there's going to be some big difficulties uh, in terms of matchups and lining up and how will he do. Uh, testing is great and all, but nobody has their set builds yet for, for very many characters. And even if they have the build, they are trying to get the AI. So his results right now are always obviously tentative. But I think he has a, he's looking like he has a lot higher potential than uh, previous characters, uh, namely Jero. So I think uh, pretty much all of Derp's uh, excited to be taking Kui, uh, someone completely new with uh, zero yeah. history, into the league mm -hmm. to really try to kind of 
make a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with that, shall we move on to the contenders for the fifth spot? All right, let's do let's it. Let's do that. This will be so, fun. These are just the ones off their master list. Uh, there's a high chance one of these get taken, but there's still the opportunity for a free agent to be picked up later. But in terms of what they have, uh, the fifth member fight club, as per se, uh, we have Dodoria, who is a spammer and tank. Um, he's a returning member from seasons past, so potentially going to be making his re-return. Uh, but unfortunately, as one of his biggest cons is he is the slowest active charger in the league, which means when he sits there and actually goes like, ah, and charge, it's the slowest. So while his spam is like great, what? he has great B2s, he uh, unfortunately has a hard time getting to those. So it'll be interesting. Uh, he's always been an interesting character in that aspect. Devil Man, a character from this previous season, so another potential returning member. Uh, very strong in terms of spam, two, two bar B2s is always great, albeit they are kind of difficult to hit. But his fast melee is uh, sadly weak. So and he also has as uh, one of the highest potential damage ults, but it's also an extremely situational ult, dealing very minimal to characters of good standing. So, and finally, as we have talked about before, a pool um, also still in it. Another new blood that could really alter the league, having not been it for much at all. Uh, another great character that can kind of tank melee, really all rounder. He can kind of do anything. Uh, Jack of all trades will be interesting to see if he ends up finding a spot somewhere because even if not he has shown some results in testing uh, Pretty much all these characters have uh, Pool's biggest downside has to be though that he has uh, very small b2s uh, He doesn't have full power versions of moves. He has the regular just energy beam and energy ball so uh, High speed rush very bland very small very difficult to uh, get the damage off, but when he, he does hit, they're they're pretty middle, middle of the ground damage, so they do their job. Yeah. So, three strong characters. Certainly, all three could help fill in this team. Uh, Dodoria, I believe, is already pretty much more guaranteed than the others due to Devilman's probably having the worst chance in a pool uh, floating around. But the characters not picked up here. I think Devilman's being looked at by Resurrected Warriors and a pool, of course, can be a free agent or picked up by Cold. So. None yep. of these characters are dead just because Derp doesn't pick them up, but uh, yeah, I mean, Donut, who who here are you liking and disliking? Um, dislike is Devilman, um, not because he's just a bad character, but he's he's such a niche character, right? Um, if, if you could have the um, pick and choose who you want at any point in time, you just wait until you face like you know you know Bujins or Androids or you know those types of teams and just say, hey, all right, Devilman. Go alt, right? And um, it, for but for every other team, well not every other, but a lot of the other teams, there's a, it's a very uh, high risk, high reward, right? If he doesn't get the ult off, and he doesn't land the ult, it's like well, all right. So he's a guy sometimes spamming and sometimes hitting that 5k B2, great, right? But that's about it, because his melee is pretty subpar and you know his B2s are okay. He can spam a lot, but it's there's some options that are just better in that regard, in my opinion. Um, my favorite out of these three would be the Doria, um, just because I feel he has the highest ceiling of all of them. Um, obviously, he can fit as a spamming or the tank role, and um, obviously, he has a tank role kind of filled, and the spamming is a little filled by um, um, the champ over there. Um, but I still think it would be a pretty solid pickup, all things considered, for the Doria. A pool is very interesting, though. A pool is kind of like a mixture of Kui and Supreme Kai. A little bit of all around, a little bit of what, what Kui can do in regards to um, similar type of um, um, build, I guess you'd say. But, um, like I said, the downside is that he has essentially what Frieza Soldier has with the small B2s. And that's really, really a downside because, well, as, as we already said earlier, every bit of damage helps, right? So, my favorite, Dodoya, least favorite would be Double Man out of these three. So, Fiora, uh, go ahead and give us the rundown on the fifth member Fight Club. Yeah. I know you've yeah. been throwing different uh, <laughs> objects in their chairs and such to see who will come out on top, who is creative enough to uh, fight for that spot here. All right, so currently, Dodoria is the favorite to become the fifth member of Derp. As 
Donut has stated, Dodoria has the highest ceiling. He's shown a lot of promise in testing. He currently, I'm trying to build him as a tank spammer, actually, instead of just a pure tank or a pure spammer. Similar to Nappa, you know, defense plus three, launch, fighting spirit, latent energy, just pure charge and defense for Taras. And of course, Savior, because his ult is pretty great. Yeah. And he gets power body when in max power mode. You know, he has a mouth beam, which is just a standard beam attack. I <laughs> don't know what other way to describe it other than, you know, he doesn't need to charge it. He has, you know, that head charge, you know, kind of similar to Spopovich's Berserker Crash. You know, it costs four bars, but it hits like a truck. And his ult is possibly the best of anyone on my master list because it's basically Adult Gohan's Explosive Madon, but even bigger. And Adult Gohan, he's... There's a reason he's permanently on the FA pool. He's just that good, partly because of his Explosive Madon. Yeah. Devilman. I've had a lot of problems with Devilman in the season. In the first half, he was pretty average looking, but towards the end, he just completely fell apart. And I can go over why. For one thing... Because of how low his melee is, if he can't hit a B2, he's just going to be hitting it. He's just going to be hitting the opponent with a wet noodle because that's effectively what his melee is. In addition to that, his B2s are very hard to hit. Easily the hardest to hit of the three fighting for this fifth spot. You know, he has a rush B2, it tracks, but it's still a rush B2. And it's not even particularly fast, like the champ's dynamic mess -em up punch. Mm -hmm. You know, his fork throw is one of the worst B2s in the game because it's just a, an object that gets thrown, and it, if you you only have to dodge it once. You know, unlike say Dodoria's mouth beam, which if you dodge, a character could still end up going back into the beam for whatever reason because it's shiny, I guess. And his ult is so, so difficult to work with. It's tiny, it's slow, and like you two have mentioned, its damage is inconsistent. Against a team like Cold, the Androids, or the Royals, or the Boos, it's fantastic. It'll do over 20, not 20k, but over 18k on everybody. But again, it seems like Budokai, the Earth Defenders, it, the, the Rugrats even, it's just completely useless. I, Devilman is easily the least favored of the three here, for me as well. Yeah, he and certainly he had his time in the limelight, so... Right. Okay, and now, as for a pool... His kit isn't terrible, by any means. You know, his charge rate is admittedly bad, but it's not too terrible. His melee is solid enough, and his B2s are fine damage-wise, it's just that, kind of similar to Devilman, he has difficulty hitting his B2s, but because they're they're so tiny, like, his, uh, ener his full power energy wave is barely bigger than a Dodon Ray, and his ult... <laughs> his ult is less than... You know, it's an energy ball, and it's less than half the size of the regular energy ball-type attacks of other characters. Like, if you compare it to Majin Vegeta's Big Bang attack, Trunks's uh, Burning attack, Broly's Eraser cannon... It's, it's so tiny, it's so hard to hit. And it really doesn't help that a pool is just overshadowed by Kui. Now, the reason why it's a fight for the fifth spot is because Team Cold Kingdom exists. Because they could contest for Dodoria and win him. Sure. And if that's the case, I would have to choose between Devilman or a pool. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if, if that were to be the case, I think I might end up picking a pool. A pool, baby. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably safe to go with someone like Dodoria, as with Kui, you already have one new blood, and 
While a pool certainly has a lot of potential, he it, taking all that new blood might be a little difficult. So, not to say already he's already overhauling the team. Yeah, I'm already overhauling the team. <laughs> adding in two relatively untested characters could be a bit much. I mean, you sure. never know. There's a lot of teams doing some interesting stuff this off season. Uh, you guys being one of the teams that instead of looking for trades and loans and stuff are more so looking for, you know, hidden gems in your master list. And Kui is looking to be that for this next season. So what will happen from that, you know, is, is to be seen. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, one of my goals for this season isn't just to do well or to win the playoffs, but to do it without having to rely on an FA. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want it to be like in season eight or season 10, where we just had like an, that S tier FA to carry us to victory. No, I want my squad to do well with or without the FA. I mean, to be fair, coming off a, uh, you know, as hard of a season as you did this last season, trying to kind of rebuild your own team before looking to uh, adapt it with free agents is probably the best you know outlook you could take i think most teams don't want free agents there are teams who certainly will take one uh but for the most part i think teams want to basically create their own squad they want they want to be their own team before having to grab a free agent and the free agent would only be to help fill in maybe a hole on the team more so than to replace something they could have so i think is a great way to look at it granted to each their own everybody can do what they need to do there are certainly some very strong free agents that can help out this league but derp certainly has Whoever wins the ball yeah but so yeah um but then i think i think the lineup you'd have let's say the doyas in that fifth slot i think that that lineup would definitely be able to make playoffs in my opinion just from character output and what i've seen from testing thus far so i i, I do think there's a relevant well possibility to make playoffs and have a pretty deep of a run into it um um as well so i think you're on the right track for sure mm -hmm. yeah well, and in case it hasn't been made obvious jero's not getting picked he yeah, sucks. yeah yeah Jero i'll give a small trash. comparison uh to probably the most polar opposite of your guys squad running right now with your setup of uh hercule Kai, Supreme Kai, Salza, Kui, and Dory is very similar because we have our tanky spammer in the form of Majin Buu. We have our uh, just all around, you know, high B2 damage in Kid Buu. We have our heavy melee in Super Buu. We have our just kind of all rounder in Evil Buu. And then, uh, you know, Supreme Kai is that true all rounder in, against. Uh, Maju. So very similar kind of idea of just utilizing your Pataras to their extremes, really getting the most out of them. Uh, I think Dodoria slides in. I mean, really him and a pool do. Maybe yeah. Devil Man kind of is a little awkward having too much spam on your team. Uh, but Dodoria has solid melee mm -hmm. to back him up, and that's why he's able to get away with maybe defense plus three or whatnot. Or I guess technically yeah, you can take defense with... plus two since defense plus two attack minus one would be your second defense. As a quick side note, every team yeah. can only have two members with defense Pataras in the lineup for that week. So they can't just put defense yeah. on everybody. Only two can have it. And yeah. so with Dodoria, it would be uh, most likely him and Salza, but anything could change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dodoria definitely isn't set in stone. He could really be built for anything. Like, did you know back in Season 4 he was built for max melee? <laughs> it's really? so weird to think. Huh. Really. Uh, you don't look at him and say, oh, that's a melee character. You don't, right? Um, but I guess they did, they, and... they did it. And he was pretty good, like... Hmm. Currently, with my personal project, I'm about nine weeks into rewatching season four, and he's averaging over 50k. Granted, I in the current league, I don't think he could be built for melee, but it's an option. Well, I mean, Kui has some and decent B2s, and with uh, False Courage, as we've seen on Hercule, uh, that could certainly still be something that's accomplished. Yeah, cu currently, 
like immediately right now. I'm trying to see if I could get Doria to work with just key plus two and high tension in terms of key Protaras. So that like, you know, the launch support and fighting spirit that he has could be spread around to the other characters to try to make their charge rates more well-rounded, you know? Yeah, still plenty of time to figure all that out. Um, and he is very flexible in what he can do, as you just said. Pretty much melee, spam, tank. Uh, kind of that same Bodus uh, Kabito Kai of being all-rounder. You know, maybe not as good in some departments, having slow charge rate and slow melee, but the damage is still there on all of his stuff. Everything still hits like a truck. Uh, he he kind of is your team's truck when you look at it. Uh, he looks much like a truck. He's going to hit like a truck. Uh, obviously, he literally has a move that's basically like truck. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, you could, to a degree, say... He throws, uh, a, he throws a truck at the enemy. <laughs> I don't know where he gets it, but he throws it. Yeah, and his head becomes the truck. So, yeah, certainly a very versatile character. Uh, gonna be gonna be interesting this next season. I think you guys have really reformed and, and kind of taken a step back on everybody and started from the ground up. And uh, obviously, we're very early into testing. It'll be about you know from when this episode comes out, there'll be somewhere around 16 weeks. Uh, once we get into June, ideally, I think is when the league's planning to get back going, but. We'll see what progress if that means preseason or whatnot so should be uh, interesting by then and of course uh, for those that don't know on the testing channel and on the discord and of course we'll have the discord link down below uh, mm -hmm. you can see we do 4v4 weekly tests and every team gets to submit one and uh, of course derps also in there so with all these characters if you want to see how they're progressing and what they're doing you can do that Obviously, in the Discord, is Fiora is very active and can answer questions about Derp. Um, and as with anybody in the league, if you wanted to get more about their teams, and as we come out with these videos, we hope to bring more, you know, hope to bring the coaches more towards uh, the audience so that they can hopefully uh, bring some more people into their squads. I think everybody is always happy to get more supporters. There's more ideas, you know, more just out there thinking strategy all kinds of stuff because you know when it comes down to it this is still very much team play wise it's just uh you're watching the the members go out and fight for you while we sit up in the the members boxes <laughs> yeah well is there uh, any kind of final remarks maybe some uh maybe a few predictions before we uh, end off this episode I predict it. The champ will be somewhere around the top ten of the league, possibly number one. That would be uh, ideal. Whoa, whoa! All right, number one. Okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, just... yeah, I'm fighting. Yeah, I'll fight self. All yeah, right. I'll actually fist fight self. So yeah, we're doing number one right spot. Now. We're doing testing right now about that. <laughs> you know, I do wonder, uh, and it would be interesting to see is uh, the hit rate on Kui's ults. Based off testing so far, he has a very hmm. good hit rate with it when he uses it. He seems to be actually one of the few characters good at using his Rush B2 ult, so I, I wonder how he will uh, transpire as the season goes on, if maybe he gets Savior even though he's probably going to be melee just due to that hit rate with it. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be fun to see. I mean, I think just everybody I wants to see how Kui's going to do this next season. Yeah, I think that's the biggest, um, biggest selling point right now. To see, this is such a new character that no one knows anything about, really. Um, it'd be very fascinating to see how he does, specifically. I love Kui's rush ult. Just for how funny it is. Like, mm -hmm. for, for those of you who don't know, considering how Kui almost never, has almost no history in the league, when he does his rush ult, you know, he stops right in front of his opponent and then looks over to the side like, Lord Frieza! <laughs> to, to scare the opponent into turning around. And then he blasts them. And it's so funny to me when he does it to characters that could destroy Frieza and know they could destroy him, but mm -hmm. they still fall for it. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see him do it against Frieza. That will be funny as hell. <laughs> Lord Frieza, it's you behind you! <laughs> yeah certainly leads uh, to good. some interesting uh situations uh, but you know fun ult nonetheless uh, and funny enough he actually that volley people kind of you know maybe say isn't so good for him he uses it in his ult he goes full volley right in their face he's like yeah build me for b2s i'll do it so 
Yeah. <laughs> Certainly an option. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I think overall Terps is going to be a very exciting team. I don't think there's any teams that won't be exciting, but they're a team yeah. that's basically rebranding. So while they're under their tried-and-true name that's been around since the first season, uh, this is a, a very different Derp that we're going to see this upcoming season. They seem to be really reworking their system. So, mm -hmm. is there any final, final remarks? Not for me, really. Uh, I mean, other than that, it's been great yeah. to be working. Okay. You go ahead, Donut. <laughs> uh, obviously, just the um, you know, best luck for the season. Hopefully, we get to see you in playoffs again. Very cool. It's been great to have this interview with you guys. I've had a pretty good time. Yeah, thank Anytime. you again for being on. You are always uh, welcome, and obviously we'll have you on again during the season, hopefully during one yep. of your money matches to talk about maybe how you got an elite or something. That'll always be fun. <laughs> Can we elite when? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never know. Maybe he pulls yeah. it off. So Might. with that, this has been the Capsule Cast Teams Edition Uh Obviously, please check out the Discord down below. We still have the Twitter, which will be slightly inactive during the offseason, but we have other events going on, such as Tournament of Power, uh, the website with all the Patars and all of that and such. And hopefully we can keep that updated as it comes along. If you wish to join any of the departments, which there are many, or any of the teams, you can find that in the Discord. Uh, with that, I'm Dorgard. I'm Donut. And I'm Fiora. And have a good one. See ya.